How, how do you think either through your studies, you think about church history or just even in your experience, how do we start to form mm. or deal with some of those hurts yeah. one, or form kind of those healthy yeah. spaces? I mean, I think it's crucial. You know, um, there's a therapist that my wife saw for a while, not a, not famous, no books or anything that I'm aware of. But she had this great line. She said, our deepest wounds come from relationship." Mm-hmm. But so do our, so does our deepest healing, mm-hmm. and and that's the that's the conspiracy of grace in the Church of Jesus, mm-hmm. is that our primary sin is fundamentally a relational problem, mm-hmm. like all sin at its root is a breakdown of love, mm-hmm. and it's not an abstract moral category; it's right. a relational category, and sin is, and so our primary human problem is a broken capacity to relate to God and to other people. Mm -hmm. And the only pathway out is through healing relationships with God and other people. Mm -hmm. And those two things go hand in hand, you know? So um, psychologists have given us this framework that's just a a frame that's for something that you would read in scripture of attachment filters. Mm -hmm. And there are kind of three or four primary attachment filters of anxious or avoidant and scattered and stable. Mm -hmm. And then there's sub, you know, they get fancy and there's subcategories. You can nerd out as much as you want. But the the basic pattern is, is very simple and very biblical that we were created for love. You know, Dr. Kurt Thompson has that beautiful line talking about the attachment system and how it literally comes online when we take our first breath and what do babies do? They look around trying to make eye contact. Mm -hmm. And he has, you know, says something effective. We're born looking for someone looking at us in love. And this is like spirituality from the moment we come out of our mothers. We're just looking for somebody to make eye contact with us and love us. And if we receive that, steady eye contact, stable love through the highs and lows Mm. to calm our emotional kind of, we can't self-soothe, babies can't emotionally calm themselves. To calm us, then it develops this deep body implicit knowledge that the world is a safe place to be, that people are basically Mm. good, that I can entrust myself and I can go and give love away. I don't have to hoard it for myself. Mm. But the problem is many of us, don't receive that or we receive it imperfectly or we're wounded later in life and that implicit knowledge begins to be rewired by pain, trauma, divorce, betrayal. Pastors are often the worst Mm -hmm. because we receive often a disproportionate amount of relational wounding. Mm -hmm. So many pastors actually become deformed by the pastoral call. They become more and more detached guarded, yeah. avoidant, lonely, suspicious, which is suspicious, right, yeah. cynical, mm-hmm. power hungry, control mm-hmm. behind almost every power hungry controlling pastor you've heard about mm-hmm. is somebody who is deeply wounded and never got healed. Mm-hmm. And so they learned I have to control my environment to keep my soul safe, which is the phenomenon of like the lonely pastor, mm-hmm. which is bizarre. Most pastors are extroverts, not mm-hmm. me, but most are. And most pastors are with people all of the time. Right. But you're in these dual relationships Mm -hmm. where there's still the guard up and, you know, many pastors there then go home and are profoundly lonely and are not actually known at a soul level, which is incredibly dangerous. So I think you have to acknowledge, listen, you are going to get hurt in deep relationships but it's the one place you can be healed. Mm. Um, you know, the authors of The Relational Soul, who I'm sure you know, have that beautiful line about attachment theory and spiritual formation. How you relate is how you relate. Mm. So if you somehow learned at an implicit level that people are not safe, men are not safe, authority figures are not safe, whatever, and then you attempt to just like, I'm just gonna ignore other people and yeah. have my relationship with right. God. Doesn't work that way. Your body has a way of relating and it's, I'm gonna avoid, I'm gonna not get in touch with painful emotions. I'm gonna be tough and strong and powerful and in control. That's how you're going to be with God. And so, you know, there's a dual, it's not, we don't heal with God by healing with each other or heal with each other by healing with God. We move forward in both areas. Mm -hmm. Primary pathways for deep growth 
our contemplative Christian spirituality, deep long-term relationships and suffering. Mm. Um, and leadership is a form of suffering. So you yeah, yeah, get yeah, that yeah. one thrown yeah. in, you yeah. know, it's kind get of put in there. Pastoring is, totally. let's just, we can shoot straight. Yeah. That's, that's the work. That's yeah. the pathway. If there is a, it's not a formula, but if there's a path, I think mm. it's something like that. We, we slow down and we contemplate the love mm. of the Trinity coming toward us in Christ, being poured into our heart by the mm. Holy Spirit. This may happen in loud rock and roll worship, charismatic encounter moments, yeah. but hopefully it's also happening early in the morning or late at night, out in the beauty of nature in mm. a cabin somewhere, just quiet with God, just mm. being loved in your shadow. It happens in these deep, I know you, you know me, we're burying our soul, there's confession, there's mm. honesty, we're helping each other see our shadow. Mm. And it happens as we walk with God through pain and suffering. Like that, those are the three fronts I think we move forward and they're all relational. When I think, as I listen to you, my hunch is any number of folks listening to you right now are becoming aware of spaces, right? Yeah. You start to become aware of you know, something with Stuff your, we, yeah, we, some old relationship, that person who left the church or that person mm -hmm. I used to work with, or this thing from my family. And you gave a few resources, some ideas there, but how do you think people start to, instead of just move around that or in our environment, we'll just lay hands on you, pray for you. And hopefully yes, we can just zap you, zap it out of matrix you. theory, you which by the way, I, yeah. I want to do that too, but, yeah. but and I believe in a counter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But what do you think are some first steps of inquiry mm. there? I mean, how have you seen yeah. in your own life or as you help people? I, mean, I love that you're even asking the question because you know better than I do working with so many leaders across the world that what happens is emotional wounds and relational wounds accumulate in our body. Yeah. And what happens is if they're left unhealed, they eventually sabotage our ministry. Yeah. And um, so to, just to sidetrack, to nerd out, there's this psychologist, James Pennebreaker, mm. who did one of the first ever major studies on trauma. Mm. And what he wanted to look at with this team was why is it that, uh, so early, it's not politically correct anymore. Early uh, research around trauma was all focused on building resilience. Mm -hmm. So a lot of talk about what psychologists call post-traumatic growth, that mm -hmm. many people experience trauma and they actually are not just better people at a moral level on the other, they're actually happier, right. healthier people on the other side of trauma. Yeah. And then other people are like almost emotionally crippled yeah, by it. For by like, the same phenomenon. Yep. Right, right. So the early, it's not social, it's not politically correct anymore. The earlier kind of psychological work was all on how do we build resilience and mm -hmm. the people so that their experience is post-traumatic growth. So he wanted to look at why is it, why is it that some people go through the same experience and are wrecked and never really emotionally recover and other people, it's like the foundation of their, their crystallist. That's like the genius of who they become. Mm -hmm. And their theory, so they had a hypothesis. Their hypothesis was it's traumas that have a social stigma attached to it mm. that people don't recover from. Mm. So they specifically looked at things, of course, sexual assault, as you'd imagine, but they also looked at um, the suicide of a spouse. Mm. They, they, their assumption was, hey, if your spouse were to take their own life, there's probably some whispers about that. Right. Didn't you know? Were yeah. you part, you know? Totally. And there's probably some cultural shame, right or totally wrong. Yeah, yeah. There's probably, there's a social stigma to that. Mm. And so that was their theory. What they found at this huge study was that there was almost zero, that the theory was totally wrong. Right. And there was almost zero correlation between the nature of the trauma, the severity of the trauma, and whether or not somebody was uh, impacted by it positively or negatively. Yeah. The one and primary correlation they found was did the person, whatever the trauma was, major, minor, did they have at least one person to emotionally process the pain with in real time? Mm. Those that did overwhelmingly made a full emotional recovery wow. over time. So there's a whole definition of trauma that is, you know, trauma is emotional pain that has yet to find a relational home. Mm. So all that to say, I think the way we deal with it is we have spiritual friendships. Yeah. 
And that can be a therapist. It yeah. can be a church. It can be a spiritual mother or father. It can be your grandma on the front porch. Yeah. It can be a best friend that you do confession with every week. And it can be a spiritual director. I'm not, I give spiritual direction. I'm in spiritual direction. And I probably have an underwhelming view of like the technique of spiritual <laughs> direction. I think what you need is an older, wiser, loving soul that you have no secrets with. Mm and that can bear witness to the kindness of God in the pain of your life. Mm. So I don't want to oversimplify something as complex as healing. There's yeah. no simple solutions to right. it. But I know one essential ingredient yeah. is that as you are experiencing pain, that the only times that I've been small t traumatized in my life, deep, and I just mean like deeply wounded, have been ironically times when I was more relationally isolated. Mm -hmm. The times when I went through extreme pain with other people, um, I really think God actually, they were extraordinarily painful. Right. And a lot of good came from them. Yeah, because you could walk with people. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of courage to maybe even uncork. I mean, again, if people are listening right now, taking what you're saying seriously. Yeah you become aware of things that you kind of put to bed in a certain way. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was bad, but you know, I'm doing great these days yeah. or whatever. It takes a lot of courage, even within like a system, you know, like a church family to say, what happened back there? Something happened there. Yeah. And we're not quite right. Yes. Can we talk about what happened? Yeah. And that takes a lot of courage and it takes a steady hand as you're saying. People it's terrifying that work for you. especially yeah. if you're new to it. Yes. And especially if you have Christian justifications for spiritual bypassing. Yes. Uh, Ways know. to get around it. But yeah, that, uh, your experience is my experience. Yeah. And yeah, and so I, I, what I'd love maybe is for you to pray for that. Yeah. Would you mind praying? Yeah. People are listening. They're probably becoming aware of a couple things. Yeah. That's what happens when you have a conversation like this. And stuff starts, memories you, come up. That's right. A yeah. Memory may be in your mind right now. Yeah. Yeah, or when you're starting to feel a pain. Or yeah, hurt. Could, could, would you would you yeah. mind just praying for us? Yeah, I would. I mean, I just I could not agree more. You know, so it's terrifying at first, and then I just think the enemy's one of his stratagems is to keep us in fear. Hmm. You know, Evagrius had that thought: question every thought that comes into the doorway of your mind. And if it didn't say, are you for us or for, for our enemies? And here's his, his litmus test for how you know if the thought is from the Spirit of God. He says, if it's from the Spirit of God, it will, quote, fill you with tranquility. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we just pause before you now, even to slow down our breathing. Invite you just to really Sit in the sensations in your body, whatever they are. If there's a, a part of your body that you feel a dull ache in, or a tension, or a tightness, or a pain, or a weariness, just breathe into that. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into the depth of our bodies. that line, the issues are in the tissues, come into the many issues that have some residual memory in our body itself. Hmm. Holy Spirit, come. I would invite you just to bring to the forefront of your mind any fear or hurt that is coming to the surface of your mind, your memory, your consciousness. And just breathe it out, offer it up to God in prayer. You can use words like God here is, or you can just exhale deep from the belly. God, I ask that you would substitute, that 
you would atone, that you would trade, that you would take away this fear or this hurt, and that you would give in its place the tranquility of God. Pray that you would remove all fear. I imagine in my mind's eye almost a door on a wall that leads somewhere unknown and you know that's the path you need to walk to heal. But it's terrifying to think of what's behind the door. In this moment, we don't have time to walk that path. It may be many years down the hallway or the path on the other side of the door, but may God give you peace right now. Mm. May he remove the fear of what's behind the door. May he give you the courage to open it and to calmly, peacefully, gently, and relationally with other people, not by yourself, walk down the long path of healing into the unknown future mm -hmm. of Jesus' love and kindness and destiny over your life. May God give you grace for the journey. Amen. Amen. Amen.